Assalamualaikum and welcome back to another episode. I am your host Adam and our guest today is Aisha Ikram, a transformational coach, speaker and facilitator from the UK. I'm looking forward to talking to Aisha about her work, so stay tuned. Thank you for taking the time out to share your story with us today. Thank you so much for inviting me. Alhamdulillah. I want to congratulate for you for recently launching your podcast. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, it, it was in the pipeline uh, for, you know, a long time ago. But this time I thought, you know what, no more excuses. Um, so, yeah, I've started doing that in form of short um, you know, messages and short uh, messages and short um, episodes. MashaAllah. May Allah bless it. Thank you. The name of the podcast is Transform uh, Your Life with Aisha. Yes. Uh, I had the opportunity to listen to one episode. Oh, subhanAllah. I could describe your podcast as relaxing, soothing and empowering, MashaAllah. Oh, subhanAllah. Thank you. You published your second episode. I haven't had the chance to listen to that yet. Yeah, so the aim of the podcast is really to empower, as you said, empower people and educate them, most mm. importantly, to understand the role of thoughts. Because everything that we experience in life, uh, we, we do that by thought. Mm. Um, it's very simple, but we don't realize it. And the moment you realize it and how we can use these thoughts to help us and empower us in our life, that's, that's the moment when transformation happens. You know, that's the time when not only are not only our minds and bodies change, but, you know, the change happens uh, on spiritual level. When transformation happens, everything in your life changes. For example, if you have problem uh, on one plane, you know, horizontal level in your life, people see problem, one problem at a time, relationship problem, you know, money problem, uh, health problem. When transformation happens, there's a conscious shift in our understanding and perspective of how we see life, how everything is illusion. And we see problems as we are wrapped up in these problems. As a result of transformational coaching and, and a shift in our consciousness, the problem no longer seems to exist. It doesn't mean that you, know, you sort of wave a magical wand. Mm. All it means is that we understand how our thoughts work we experience each and every single thing in our life by thought and just by simplifying in our body in our, and in our um, you know, spirit. Yeah, the, it's so fascinating when you said basically thoughts create our reality and the way we see the world. And the way we see the world might be illusion, as you mentioned. Tell us more about that. So when I say illusion, let's say, for example, a, a client might be trapped in this thought that their relationship is not working well yeah. and their partner is driving them crazy. Well, the thing is, that's how they see that, you know, the other person, their, their husband or wife is causing the problem. They are the one who's constantly, you know, um, throwing a spanner in, in the wheel. Mm. But in reality is, that the way you perceive that problem, the way you perceive that argument by thought and how we process this information. So internally, when we see that as a problem, it, when we see that as a problem, it appears as a problem. So that's an illusion. And the moment you realize that, that problem goes away because the fact of the matter is we cannot always react to a certain situation in a similar way. You know, we might be in love with certain food, but not necessarily. Let's say I, I enjoy, um, you know, biryani, for example, you know, yeah. very um, popular Asian dish. So that, that if I start eating that every single day, do you mm. think I'm going to enjoy that? No. Not really, right? But we do the same thing with problems whether it's a relationship problem, financial problem, because we see that every single day and we, we associate our problems or our, our negativity with that uh, problem. But yeah. the way I'm perceiving that is, is something that is causing the problem. Mm. Well, so that's I, the illusion. 
see the problems as opportunity, would that change the way we, we see things? Yes, that's, that's, that's the essence of the thing, because there, in reality, there is no problem, because every problem we face is through mm. the thought. Yeah. So, for example, with that, uh, you know, with that friction with your partner, what if you can see that your partner is acting on a negative thought, or maybe they are having a bad day? They are not really shouting at you, or maybe they are shouting at you, but because yeah. they had a bad day, so you give them a benefit of doubt, and you let that slide by. Yeah. So instead of you know uh, fueling into this fire, you sort of act as cooling down that fire. And next time, that doesn't mean that we started putting up with our partners the negative behavior all the time, and we make ourselves a doormat. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what I'm saying is at that time, if we are willing to give them benefit of doubt, and if we are seeing that regardless of whatever they are saying, it's how we are processing this information. That's what is causing my experience. That's what is causing me to be mad or happy or whatever. So straight away, when you can see that you always have the key to react in a certain situation, you take control of that circumstance situation that circumstances is, is no longer you know you're no longer a victim that circumstances mm. you take the driving seat and the way it works is obviously next time when your partner is is in a good mood you can talk about that problem right mm. so there yeah. there's always a way around uh, a different way of dealing with a certain situation whether it's a, it's a problem with in a relationship or problem at work mm. or even a uh, problem in business this concept helps even build them in business. This concept helps even building um, uh, emotional resilience because emotional resilience, when you have enough resilience, you know, you can, that doesn't mean you won't have problems in life. All it means is that you have um, better understanding of dealing uh, with those problems and creating them into opportunities because we have infinite amount of resilience within us. Hmm. All we have to do is just turn on the uh, the switch, the light bulb, to see that. That sounds so interesting. What is emotional resilience? So emotional resilience is is basically, in simple term, is our ability to deal with life. Life is, you know, when we go for driving, yeah. um, you know, let's say you're driving, we can never expect that the road would be smooth. There would be no turns, no hmm. ups and downs. So things, you know, come up in life. And when you have enough different situations, you call them situations rather than calling them problems, you deal with these situations as they turn up. Mm. Instead of shouting back, instead of reacting, you respond. Yeah. So when you start, when you change your perspective from being reactionary to response, that's the time when emotional um, resilience, but when you tap into your infinite um, you know, resource of emotional resilience, that's when the consciousness, um, you know, shifts. You take a level up, yeah. you know. Imagine there's a ladder. And when you go on a higher level, uh, you know, on a higher step of that ladder, you do see your problems. All of those problems are there, but you can realize that they're illusionary because the way you experience the problem, it has changed. There's a shift inside you. Yeah. You know that you have the control and you will find a solution. Mashallah. So what I'm hearing is this we mashallah. So what I'm hearing is this we can make the choice whether we react to situation or to respond to the situation. And emotional resilience is something that we can all develop. But how do you get to practice that emotional resilience in daily basis? You practice by deepening your understanding. First of all, you know how when you attend these um, confidence, I don't know if you've ever attended these confidence building classes or emotional resilience building classes, that sort of gives, I, I would say it's a little bit of, um, it gives a misunderstanding or this notion of something that you develop from zero to one to 10 to 100 because you don't have it. Mm. You don't need to develop something that you already have inside you. You know, when children, they are extremely, they have infinite amount of uh, untapped um, resources. 
um, resource of emotional resilience and confidence. You know, if they fell down, that's yeah. the emotional resilience they help them that helps them getting up. You yeah. know, a child would never stop trying to walk after he or she drops the first time. Every time she would try to walk, she would fall down and then she would get up again. That's the, re that's the resilience within herself that yeah. motivates us, you know, inspires her mm. to, to do whatever it is that you want to do. So similarly, the way you tap into your emotional resilience is, again, the key is simplicity. Simplify your life. Simplify by understanding that this situation, whether it's in your business or it's in your personal life, that situation is not defining you, first of all. You are not a victim of that circumstances. Yeah. You know, even people, let's say, you know, I was working with a sister who was going through in, in her life um, because she was a single mom. And she has, she thought that she has lost her confidence. She has lost her resilience and she can no longer even get remarried up to a point where she was getting a lot of good proposals, but she was rejecting that because she had this fearful mind that she's no longer able to handle another, uh, you know, bad incident in her life. Mm. So when you talk to a coach, you are in a, you know, a coach helps you sort of creating a safe environment where you go through your own fears, your own limiting beliefs. And when they start to falling away, you can see that that emotional resilience was never lost. You just had to open your eyes, you know, kind of, yeah. you know, when you are in dark room, you turn on the light switch yeah. and everything lights up. Yeah. That's, that's an insight. That's the light bulb moment. The moment you see that your problem had enough emotional resilience to deal with that problem and to turn it around. Actually, that's never, that was never there. That's the whole illusion. Wow. That's profound. And it reminds me of the prophetic tradition that it's all good. All mm. situations are good, either bad or good. That is so true. And that's why I find uh, transformational coaching so powerful. Because the, the thing is, and I, I did neurolinguistic programming before I did um, transformative coaching, or paradigm coaching, people also call that. And yeah. one thing that was the, uh, you know, kind of like a prerequisite of neuro-linguistic programming was that there is no failure but feedback. Yep. And that is so close to, you know, it's kind of like that's exactly what you said, Prof. Muhammad said that there is nothing that bad happens to you. You know, everything that happens to you, there's a lesson. Yeah. So in our life, whatever situation we go through, yeah. so in our life, whatever situation we go through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose that for us. And yeah. you know, in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that indeed with every difficulty, there is ease. There is at least twice as much as ease. Mm. But we don't see that because again, we are wrapped up into our problematic thought, you know, that this, this thought of, you know, being wrapped up into this whole um, situation or our circumstances is causing us to feel this certain way. When we are wrapped up into that kind of mindset, that's where the whole problem happens. So this yeah. is why understanding the role of thoughts and how, yeah. how just by letting go of these negative thoughts, yeah. we can sort of simply move, slowly start to move away from these problems. Yeah, subhanAllah. And you know that concept that you mentioned, there's, only, there's no failure, there's only feedback have helped me tremendously in my life because the way I see the situation now is different. I, I have to admit it's painful when you fail in something and you tend to, it's human nature to tend to be over criticized of yourself and beat yourself down. But it takes practice when you see and see what you can learn from the situation and take the failures as experience. That's the resilience, you know? Yeah. That's what you are learning. Do you know what? I'm very really fascinated with nature. You know, when you plant the seed, what happens? Mm. The seed is buried in darkness. We don't know what happens to that seed when we plant it in the ground. When the seed, you know, tears the earth, you know, when it comes out of that soil, yeah. we have no idea how much pain that seed goes through. Mm. But the beauty, you know, from that one single seed is that beautiful tree that yeah. bears 
fruits and flowers and all these things, but every growth, every transformation happens, you know, through this, this process that may seem painful at the time, but as a result of that pain, you know, yeah. we, we become who we are. Mm, true. How do we embrace transformation? You embrace it just by your willingness to be open and receptive. Unless you don't believe that transformation is possible, there isn't anyone in this world who can help you. You only need to drop your ego mind that sort of is ruled by our intellectual. You know, we think we know everything. And when we have that ego and, um, you know, when we think with that intellectual mind, transformation cannot be this simple. There has to be like 50 page process where we follow that, you know, do certain things. That's the only time transformation happens. That's the only time transformation happens. The transformation happens as a result of a single insight. What's an insight? Insight is a sight from within. One single thought, you know, insight is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. that comes by thought. One single thought can change our whole life. You know, in history, you can see that over and over again, even in Islamic history, yeah. uh, you know, I'm reminded uh, by this story of um, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. How did he change? You know, he was on his way to kill Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mm. But he diverted from that route and he ended up you know, going and seeing his sister who was reciting the Quran. And just as a result of listening to the you know, words of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened his heart and he had this insight. He had that wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So transformation, you know when transformation happens? Yeah. It happens with ordinary in your heart. Drop your ego-based uh, thinking. That's when you allow yourself to transform your life. SubhanAllah, that's profound. Basically, you need to have open mind and heart in order yes. to embrace transformation. Yes, just trust in the process. Uh, let's talk about what got you interested in coaching. You know, I think I, I find this very interesting that many coaches, they say they have been coaching or, you know, something happens in their life. You know, me, even as a young girl, I used to be fascinated by this concept of making difference in the world, doing something that would help people. Yeah. So, and, and, and funny enough, I used to, I'm, I'm the youngest one in my family, but people used to come to me to sort of ask, you know, to get like an impartial advice. Inshallah. You, think? you know, I think I, I, I would say that I was blessed with, with this wisdom, blessed with, with this wisdom. So, but I never took it seriously until a um, few years ago. But I've always been interested in personal development. So, you know, and I, ever since I finished my post-graduation in economics and business, you know, I used to do various courses, neurolinguistic programming course, behavior change course, motivational interviewing, you name it. Mm. And then I became a personal trainer. All those things that I was doing, I had two, two main aims. One is to improve myself. And the second thing it was that I wanted to help my friends and family to help them seeing, you know, a better version of themselves. But I wanted to lead by example. But two years ago, I decided that I actually would like to do this as a profession rather than just doing it as, you know, a part-time hobby. So that's where I started coaching, alhamdulillah, a couple of years ago. Mashallah. And mashallah. And looking back at those two years, what is the most surprising experiences that you had in your journey? The most surprising thing is the power of coaching. How powerful um, a coaching conversation can be, that it can change a person's life. When I started my coaching journey, I had this huge goal. You know, I wanted to be a speaker. I wanted to be, um, you know, a facilitator. I was facilitating before within the NHS, but in a different setting. I wasn't doing it independently for myself. Mm. So to me, it was a big deal. And I also um, wanted to, I wanted to coach one to many, but I didn't know how to do it. So I, I used to done some web classes, used to coach people online. So I did quite a bit of that. But the most amazing thing for me was that within this short amount of time, alhamdulillah, I was able to coach 
people globally, but I was able to appear on TV and I was able to coach people during the month of Ramadan, educate people on Islam channel and all of these things. If I, if I would have thought about it a few years ago, it just felt so overwhelming and it felt like almost impossible to achieve all these things within a short period of time. But alhamdulillah, you know, things turn around. All you have to do is keep on taking small, consistent steps. That's really amazing to hear. And that's so beautiful that you can reach out to more people and talk to them and educate them about the topic that you're so passionate about. Yeah, so uh, on Islam channel, um, there was something that, I, you know, that inspired me to share my story. So a few months ago, I shared my story um, as being a single mom, you know, how I increased my emotional resilience, how I was able to do, you know, um, because of the circumstances that I'm in, you know, I have to do almost everything on my own. And before that, I never shared my personal story because I'm quite you know, a private person. So I shared only a fraction of that with yeah. people. And humbly, I got a very good response. And the way I presented it, people found it really motivational. And the producers of you know, that show, they were so inspired that they invited me back to run a um, you know, series, educational series. And the most you know, inspirational thing for me was that I was blessed to do that during the month of Ramadan. So I, I, I kind of led that whole educational series during, um, you know, the month of Ramadan on different life skills topics. That was quite, um, you know, alhamdulillah, I was quite blessed to have been able to go through this experience. So what is the, what have you learned by coaching so many people now? What I learned? What have you learned by coaching so many people now? What I learned is that learning is never ending. Mm. It's it's a lifelong mm. it's it's a lifelong journey. And the beauty of coaching is it's so empowering. You know, people can change in one conversation. So the, the client I was talking about, the lady I was, you know, working with, as a result of one single coaching conversation, she was able to get married. And to be able to part of somebody's journey that, you know, she's happily married now, alhamdulillah, she sent me, you know, her, um, a very happy feedback that, you know, if it wasn't for that conversation for us, that process may have been delayed for her. Yeah. So my learning is that all we have to do is in order to get anything in our life, we just have to get out of our, you know, um, our negative thoughts or those limiting beliefs that get into the way of change. The moment we get out of our way, we not only empower ourselves, but we become a change. It's a ripple effect. Every time I help somebody, you know, transforming their life, I go through that process. So, subhanAllah, I feel so blessed that every time someone else is, you know, their mindset is shifting, my mindset also shifts. Wow. That's, that's interesting. By helping others, you also get the insight and shift within is within it yourself within yeah. yourself that's true and you know there's a there's a, a, a little bit of um, psychology behind it when you are focusing on something by default your mind sees the same thing within you you know how you know mentally we have conscious and subconscious mind you yeah. don't realize it consciously some people do you know, um, those who have a higher level of consciousness, but some even people who don't have a higher level of consciousness, every time you portray something or tell something or, or you know, send a message out into the world, you're giving the same message, whether it's good or bad. So this is why, you know, doing something that is making difference in the world on a positive level is the best way you can help yourself. So believing in others that they are able to change the world will empower yourself to see that same potential within you. Yes, of course. I want to finish off by asking three personal questions. Sure. The first one is, what advice you will give to your younger self? Oh, there's so many things I could tell myself. <laughs> but one thing that I would say which I tell many people is take it easy, you know, and don't um, don't let yourself wait for happiness as a as a destination. 
because mm. happiness is not a destination. Happiness is a journey. You know, you live through that uh, experience on every single day basis, uh, experience on every single day basis. Because if we, if we live on this uh, motto of I will be happy when, that means that it's self-sabotaging, um, you know, policy. You're not never, ever going to be happy. So if I ever have to, you know, give myself an advice, this is what I would say that take it easy and enjoy life. Take it easy and enjoy life. Yeah. Mashallah. And what is the impact that you want to have in the world? So the impact that I want to have in the world is something that I used to kind of fantasize when I was a little girl that I want to you know, ch become a change maker. So I want to create a life skill academy for people of all ages, but especially for children where, you know, um, understanding their emotions and how they can tap into their inner wisdom kind of like life skill would be a subject on mm. top of skill would be a subject on mm. top of having their core curriculum subjects because i think the best time to teach someone is children because their mindset is has not been contaminated by outside environment or negative mindset so i want to have this life skill academy global life skill academy so the change can start from a very young age Mashallah, that sounds so amazing. Mashallah. And final question is, what is the one book that you would give to someone? I find it really difficult to answer that because there, there are people have, um, depending on their situations, there's so many uh, books that I can suggest. But one thing that I, I, one book that I could suggest is that help in all areas of life is Inside the Soul of Islam by Mamun Yusuf. Because it talks about the spiritual psychology um, and as well as our mindset and how we can see that you can sort of let go of those problems. Wow, that sounds so interesting. What was the name of the author? Uh, Mamun Yusuf. So it's M-A-M-O-O-N, Yusuf, Y-U-S-U-F. Mashallah, thank you. You're welcome. And finally, what is the best way to get in touch with you or learn more about your work? So the best way to get in touch with me is you can browse my website. It's uh, aishaikram.com. That's A-Y-E-S-H-A-I-K-R-A-M.com. Or, um, you know, um, people can send me email if they have any questions. It's aishaikram05 at gmail.com. And again, that's A-Y-E-S-H-A-I-K-R-A-M05 at gmail.com. Awesome. Shazakallah khair for taking the time out to share your story and you also educated us from, uh, from very interesting topics and I really, from very interesting topics and I really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you and may Allah bless you and the work you do. Wayak, thank you so much and Shazakallah khair for, you know, for having me here and um, thank you so much for your time and everyone who listens and I pray that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you wisdom and insights that help you changing your life for the better.